Welcome back guys, another NBM vlog and in this vlog we've got this Mark V GTI in for stage 3 setup and tuning. So the Mark V GTI is a very common vehicle, especially for tuning. I mean, it's a KL3 turbocharger equipped 197 brake horsepower, 360 newton meters from factory, and we tend to tune them to about 280 to 285 brake horsepower max. And that's limitations down to the turbocharger and the injection itself more than anything. This car's already got an intake, intercooler, and a tune on there, and the customer is literally at the limitations of the stock turbocharger. So we're going for a full KL4 swap. Now the KL4 obviously came in from factory on the Golf Edition 30, the Cupra, the Mark 6 on the S3. So we use it utilizing all the ancillaries from that vehicle. So we've got the charge pipe, the inlet pipe, the fuel pressure sensor, map sensor. The turbocharger itself, obviously, it's about 20% bigger than a KL3, which helps for more power. And obviously it doesn't have the diverter valve on the housing itself and it's relocated elsewhere. We're also utilizing the injectors from the KL4 setup, so the S3 Golf R, etc. And we're going to fit some Autotech high pressure internals to maintain good fueling with the RS4 fuel return valve. All the other parts like the wire harness extension is necessary for the diverter valve because on the KL3 it sits on the actual turbocharger itself. The crossover pipe which is the recirculation pipe from the diverter valve back into the intake and all of this with brand new gaskets, clamps and seals and we'll actually Take a back of the ECU, show you the differences in terms of software, how, the, how we control boost with the KL4 um, system and what we actually target. So we're going to target about 350 to 360 horsepower with about 550 newton meters of torque. I mean, the engine itself, the BWA, hasn't got the strongest pistons and rods like on the CDL S3 Golf R blocks, but nonetheless, it can still manage the boost for a KL4 setup pretty well. GTRs are very common. Obviously, they've got to be well serviced and maintained. So common concerns like PCV valve, coil packs, um, cam followers need to be changed on a regular basis. Um, oil quality, I mean, we advise 5W40 fully synthetic and spark plugs BKR 70IX, which is the NGK Iridiums. Every car that comes in here, we give it a full inspection. This had some modification to it already. So we're always a bit wary when it comes to pre-modified vehicles. Um, but nonetheless, we give it a full inspection and diagnostics before we start work. The actual K4 setup, obviously, it came on the Golf Edition 30. So it's a like-for-like -like swap. So it's not that hard to kind of do it yourself. But in all honesty, when it comes to the mapping side of things, it is quite complex when it comes to the compressor data for the turbocharger, the actual injection fueling and whatnot. But the, I mean, this car looks tidy and it looks relatively clean underneath, so it should be an easy swap. all the parts taken off the car so you've got your throttle body pipe your charge pipe intake manifold to swap over the injectors rs4 fuel return valve and fuel rail sensor and that's the original kl3 turbocharger itself as you can probably see it's quite lean i mean this car was tuned somewhere else so we don't know what kind of condition it was in but obviously we'll put it back to base when we start mapping on the kl4 obviously the kl4 housing itself looks very similar um, but internals are very different and slightly bigger to allow for more boost pressure and more power for the same amount of boost. Um, new gasket, turbo gasket, Ultratech high pressure fuel pump. Internals are gonna go in the original high pressure fuel pump. And we've got the fuel rail sensor and the map sensor to go on as well. While it's off as well, we've taken off the old thermostat. So we're gonna put a brand new genuine thermostat in there. And this is just a care uh, product while the intake manifolds off. It only makes sense to change a part that's only 30, 40 quid.
sensors are out, just transferred over the basket and retainers for it. Um, just looking at it, cylinder one, it looks like the fuel injector was leaking for a while, and that was probably why the turbocharger has so much lean visual dust on there. Um, no doubt these injectors are probably knackered. Again, we didn't tune this car, so we wouldn't know, and we didn't data log it, so we'll transfer everything over, uh, put the injectors in the head, transfer the wiring loom over, stick the intake manifold on um, with the new rail sensor and the RS4 fuel return rail. So side by side, they look very similar, but obviously the RS4, again, it's come from an Audi RS4. Fuel return valve is about 140 bar before it cracks open and releases pressure. The stock one is about 110 to 115. Um, the fuel rail sensor as well, obviously it allows for 200 bar maximum. So we scale it appropriately in the ECU as well, because if you run the stock sensor around 140 bar, you lose resolution, so you can't gain how much fuel pressure you're increasing or losing, and it goes over, you'll never know about it. So it's always good to have a a rail sensor that's higher than your FRV. Um, on some models, we can take it up to 175 um, bar of cracking pressure on the stock injectors, but on this setup, KL4 BWA will run the RS4 fuel return valve with the 200 bar sensor. So all the parts are necessary for a KL4 swap are now on the vehicle. We just put a base calibration on there for all the new sensors um, for the KL4. Right, but it's not firing up. That doesn't sound good. So you probably heard from that, there was no start to the vehicle. Again, the base calibration on there is good for a KL4 setup before we start adding boost and timing. But looking at the data log from the diagnostics, it looks like the fuel is backing up in the rail and the rail is actually increasing in fuel pressure even at low crank. So that means injectors are not firing and letting any fuel through. We've taken off the spark plugs as well and we can see the actual tips are completely dry. So no fuel is getting to the combustion chamber. So yeah, all of this has to come back off for another set of injectors before we start again. So a new set of injectors in there and the car started up first time on the key. There was a few leaks on the manifold that we needed to take care of, one on the intake air temperature sensor, one on the PCV delete, and also the throttle body pipe wasn't sealing properly, so we put a brand new one in there. So all of this is part and parcel of any K04 swap, you do have problems like this. So let's get it on the dyno, let's do some base runs at the lowest boost settings possible, listen out for any noise from the engine, and then see what we can achieve today. So just at a base run now at 1.6 bar of boost and we're at 329 brake horsepower, 497 newton meters of torque. There's a bit of time and pull. I'm going to put that down to the fact that it's running slightly mixed fuel in there, so not 100% 99. So we're going to clean out the tank, add a bit of V power in there, um, increase boost and ignition a bit, and then see what we can achieve with this setup today. <laughs> So looking 
at that run, it seems like we lost all boost pressure. So we're gonna have to take a look at the car, take it off the dyno and see what it is exactly. So we just had a quick look underneath and it looks like the main intercooler hose, this intercooler was pre-fitted, has failed. So we're gonna have to take that off and replace it, get it on the ramp, replace it, put it back on the dyno before we begin. So not an easy car to work with, one issue after the other. Again, this intercooler was already prior fitted before it was brought to us. So we've actually taken the intercooler pipe off. We've cut it where the leak was and we've put it back together with a brand new seal on the bay and A connector. No two cars are the same here and this is part and parcel of what we do. And this car has been on and off the dyno a couple of times now. But nonetheless, I think everything's sorted now in terms of boost, vacuum, injectors, all the concerns that we've had with it. <laughs> So final results today guys, 348 brake horsepower, 517 newton meters of torque. Again, we have put a boost cap in there so the N75 does not go over 75% duty cycle because on this setup, for some reason, it was creating more boost than normal. Nine times out of 10, that means the KL4 was an original and it's been rehoused or had a hybrid internals. But nonetheless, we've got a nice smooth power graph, a nice smooth torque graph, bit of time and pull at the top end down to fuel more than anything, but nothing we can do about it. It's not been an easy stretch with this vehicle with boost leaks, wrong injectors, and a few other concerns that we've not documented, but nonetheless, still an epic result. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next vlog.